thank you for joining me. That was two Tartra trams. We're in Riga today. We're standing on the bridge over the river Dalgarba, I think it is. The bridge you see over there, that's the railway bridge, but there's actually a train just, just coming off it. It's so, it's the longest bridge in Latvia, and it's simply known as the railway bridge. It's minus two degrees here, so it is pretty cold. And in this video, we're gonna go and find out a bit more about the railways of Latvia. So, you've got Riga city centre over there. You can just see the tower of St. Peter's Cathedral. To find out more about the railway, so we're heading this way. See that building over there? That's the library. It's not where we're going. Behind the library is the Latvian Railway Museum. And that's where we're going to find out a bit more about the railways of this country. So I've only just arrived in Riga this morning. I've had a little look around the city centre. I've not seen much yet. There is a lot to see. There will be other videos. So I've just sort of got the lie of the land. I've not been on a tram yet. They've got those old Tartra trams. I've seen some other Tartra trams. I've seen a couple of Skoda trams, the more modern ones. There's another bridge over there. There's a Radisson Blue Hotel over there. Funny thing is, this city is about the same size as Glasgow. And last time I stayed in Glasgow, I actually stayed in Radisson Blue. So there's a little connection just that only I kind of see between the two cities. As for the railway bridge, well, it was built in 1909, but it was shelled in the First and the Second World War, so it's been rebuilt twice. If you look very carefully, you can just see some of the abutments of the bridge's predecessor. Anyway, I'm going to continue walking along here, following the tram lines, and we're going to find the railway museum. There's the library building behind me, and there's two types of trams. I think it might be the same ones. Um, I'm sure it was three treble oh two they've gone to the end of the route and come back in the time i was having a look at the river taking a few trains in between this and the last shot the railway museum as i said was just beyond the library that's it there i can work out the word museum and i think yeah the first word must be railway anyway we're going across the the road now it looks like it's in an old uh, depot and it goes to the types of trams and that's where we shall hopefully find some interesting railway items to see oh, look there's a more modern skoda built tram so, as I said, the Skoda trams also make up the city street. So I'm not so keen on those, but you know, I'll probably have a ride on them. Really looking for a ride on the top, looking forward to a ride on the top of the trams. I can, I'm not going to put the camera against the window, because you can see when we go inside, but I can just see rolling stock through the window. So we are uh, very nearly there. And then, yeah, oh, more types of trams. 30917s, a bus in the way, and 30928. By the way, they do also have trolley buses here. There'll be a point work there for the trolley bus wise to go different routes, so we'll probably see some trolley buses as well. I'll do a video though on the trams, a separate video, and we'll go and ride them, try out some of the routes. It's quite an interesting network of lines they have here. Oh, that's what I like to see. Through the fence, I can see a few steam engines as soon as we get past this gate, which I can only assume is the entrance, because I didn't see an entrance around there. We'll be able to go and have a closer look these steam engines and then our place to go in we're glad to get inside it's very cold I mean, it's cold snow on the ground i always seem to come to these places in winter yeah that's definitely the entrance let's just have a little look over here i won't go and walk around it yet because you might have to get your ticket before you go and look around or maybe you don't have to pay to go into that part i'm not too sure anyway we've got two two steam locomotives now these of course are the russian gauge of five foot and look at that we're soviet looking diesel there so there's quite a lot of stuff to see i'm looking forward to having a wander down there once we've been inside but i'm gonna go like i said go inside i think we can just walk down there there's people clearly just having a look around let's go i'm gonna go and pay to go in there first and we'll see what's inside and then we'll come and have a look at these steam diesel locos Oh, here we are, we're inside the museum. As you come in, coming through the doors over there, pages behind me, there's this track here, and it's got little rail bikes, some of them motorised, like that one, has a little engine on it, and then ones like this, where you have to work it yourself, you pull backwards and forwards. I did have a go on the one at Budapest in the Rail Museum there. Now, as I said, this is the five foot gauge, and here, looking at these little wagons, the track does feel really, really big compared to what we used to in the UK. Looks like some of them, that's got more powerful. Basically, it looks like they've got a motorbike and put it onto one of these, and it can tow 
a trailer with luggage on here. Look at that, I'm sure that's, that is just a motorbike. With this built around it, it'd be quite fun then. That one again is worked by a pedal pedal. So what we're gonna do now, we'll have a little look around the museum. They've given me this. It is also in English, so a little guide to the museum to show us everything we can see. So we come into this room here, and um, it's quite interesting. This sort of tells you about the railway, the people on the railway. So it shows you the uniforms, men and women's uniforms, as you can see. So this is, they're all different eras. Interestingly, you can see the uniforms, what they would have looked like, but you can also see what underwear was part of their uniforms. So it's not often I can show you women and men for that matter in their underwear on this channel, but there you go, <laughs> something different. So, let's have a look around here. So there's, this is all about sort of like signalling apparatus. There's a film on also showing about how single line tokens work. And what's quite good here, they've got all the buildings, or a building, a station building, dissected all the rooms to show you what you'd find inside. So, let's see which one this one is, I'll tell you. So that's the railwayman's apartment. So that's where the station master would have lived. There he is, sitting on the toilet, reading the paper. And um, this one under the bed. Who that is? <laughs> so that's the railwayman's apartment. And we have a look around the telegraph room. You can see the lady. So this is quite a nice way of showing you what would be inside the station. It's a nice scale. Look at this. The railway cat's watching. It's always nice to see a railway cat. Oh, talking of railway cats, in the other telegraph room, there's another railway cat. And there's the man on the phone sorting out the trains, ringing through to the next signal box, sending a train from one section to another. And then here, this is the restaurant, the station restaurant. So that's quite interesting. Now, what they've got is they've got on the other side, some of them may have a drawer. So if you open the drawer, you can see a meal you may have had in the station buffet. So I think that's quite a nice feature. Which one's this? This is the station master. And if we have a look, can you see him through the window? Um, yes, the cat is on his head. Let's have a look around this side. Station master sat there with the railway cat on his head. And if you have a look, there's his watch. And there's his whistle to dispatch the trains with. So, if we go over to here, what else are we going to find? There's a lady selling newspapers. It's like the Latvian version of WH Smith, no doubt. And then we go to here. There's a lady selling tickets through the window. So we'd go around here and you can see from inside. And this time the railway cat is, no way you can see it, but it's sat on the, on the chair. Now all of those rooms you've just seen, they all belong in this building here. So here's a smaller model. So we can press different things. So press kiosk and it actually lights up. See the lights going on, railway ticket off it. What have I just done? Okay. Um, right, I don't think that being stations do this in real life. What it's doing, it's coming apart. So we can see inside. So yeah, there's all those rooms exactly as we saw. So yeah, upstairs, we saw the railwayman's apartment. Oh yeah, and if I look, I don't know how well you can see that, but he, he's there, sat, I can just see it's half of the shot on camera, he is sat there on the toilet, just as we saw him uh, in the slightly bigger version. So there we go, that's the Latvian railway station. So that's quite an interesting introduction, this room, to Latvian railways. There's some of the luggage you would have seen. One day, I think I should get on the train and carry luggage like that, just to see what everyone thinks. What else have we got? This is quite a good exhibit. Look, got a steam locomotive, a horse, and some people walking. And I think if I turn this handle, we'll see which one's the fastest. I think we know the answer, but let's just do it anyway. Yes, we, know, we all know the steam engine man was going to win that race. That's one horse I wouldn't bet on. Not that I do gambling anyway. So we, we come back out to here and then. We'll go outside soon. We'll go into the other room of this museum. So there's a few things to see. As we come into here, we've got a great model railway. Look at that. Always like to see a model railway. This is OO gauge scale, this model railway. Now it says that the trains run on the half hour. So what we'll do 
I'll come and watch them later on when they run and I'll probably put all that into a separate video little quarry there so um, to see the trains running watch this video on screen now let's have a look at another train or a locomotive a full size one a narrow gauge one M1657 so this this would have ran on Latvia's two foot gauge railway network which it had quite a big two foot gauge railway network and uh, pretty much every narrow gauge steam engine in Latvia is very similar to this they were built by various different companies see if we can find a works number on it off the top of my head I couldn't tell you the works number but um, if I can't see it on the loco then what I shall do is I will find out when I finish the video and I'll put a link on screen I can't actually see a works number but anyway we don't have render the layout there's an airport there so this loco it's works number on screen now so there you go go to here it explains the origins of railways now interestingly they seem to use British locomotives look at that that's Richard Trevithick written in Latvian and um, there's his steam logo of course there's Rocket I think Rocket probably like Fine Scotsman is recognised the world over I know even in Hungary they actually have a Hungarian name for Fine Scotsman the Repolu Scot which literally means Fine Scotsman so you've got there's a diagram explaining how a train works or steam locomotive works again Rocket and there's a cross-section of a cylinder, so for those of you who don't know, very simply, steam goes in there, flexion rods turn the wheel. So that's how steam locomotive works. If we go around here, more information. Again, it is all in Latvian, but there's a few films playing, and they tend to be in English as well. That looks like a fire engine, fire pump, one that you would pull along by hand. And then we go through to here, there's a steam locomotive boiler. So this I don't count as seeing a steam engine. I have to see the frames are what a loco takes its identity from. So this is probably off a classmate of that narrow gauge loco behind us. Oh, I see the section bit, so you can see. So um, again, for those of you who don't know, in very simple terms, the fire is in there. You can see there's some wood in there. Fire burns away, and there's water in here. The heat flows through these these blue tubes. They probably aren't usually blue, but that's to show that the water will be on this side. And the steam raises up to the dome and goes down to the cylinders to power the steam locomotive. So that is the boiler of a steam loco. We go around here. There's some more diagrams to do with signalling and shunting. There's quite a good little film I was watching it. They played it in English and in Latvian about hump yards. Um, so that's quite interesting how hump yard works in that the wagons roll down by gravity and they can be sorted into different trains. There's a basic map of Latvia and its railway network over there. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go through here. I think this is like the museum's cloakroom. I think those seats are probably out of an old railway carriage. And then we go down into this rather large room here. And um, there's a few more things to see. But it's quite a big room with not a lot in. I think they probably held events here. So when we first came to the museum from outside, this was the building we could see. You know, I said I could see rolling stock through windows. Well, this is what I could see. These narrow gauge wagons and snow plow over there. We're going to have a look at the moment. Let's see what this is. There's like a building here. What's in here? I don't know. Oh, oh I see. Look. It's uh, well, a bit like what travelling on a train in Latvia would be like, or an older train. I don't think um, there's any standard gauge, or there certainly isn't standard gauge working steam in Latvia, because they don't have standard gauge. I don't think there's any five foot working steam in, in uh, Latvia. There might, I think there might be one of those narrow gauge locos. There might be one or two of them working, but I won't be seeing them on this visit. There's a narrow gauge wagon, and that is a snowplow. It's actually built out of the tender of an old steam loco. So again, this is two foot. Most of the Latvian narrow gauge railways were two foot, and there are one or two around two tourist narrow gauge railways in that bit at two foot so maybe on another visit I'm probably just going to do the capital I might go to another city I'm not sure yet looking out there on the snow uh, behind the there the lights playing we can't really see but that's the where the library is which we had a look at now then let's have a look over here you've got a narrow gauge carriage next to a five foot gauge carriage and as you can see the five foot gauge carriage is pretty big I don't think we can go in that one, but we can go in the narrow gauge one. So let's have a look at that. Very basic. Now, as we know, today it's cold. I have a stove, keep you nice and warm. 
wooden stove. So that would have been quite fun travelling through the countryside in that, as long as you're warm, if we want to sit next to the, uh, to the stove. Anyway, down here, in between the standard, not the standard, the uh, five foot and an hour gauge. If you look at that old picture there, that's what I think this carriage is. Oh look, that bridge there. That's the bridge we saw at the beginning of the video. So let's have a look inside this rather large five foot gauge carriage. You can see inside it. Must have a right. It's a shame there's no like steam working steam in that via on the five foot gauge. It'd be great fun to have a ride on one. We'll go and have a look at those locos outside there. And then here, look, there's a cab of a diesel. I'm not sure if that's a diesel, I think it might be a diesel multiple unit. I'm not too sure. I could, I'll be able to work it out by the number when I have a look in my Preserved Railways of Europe stock book. It would probably tell me. I've got that um, back at where I'm staying. I didn't bring it with me to here. Anyway, come to here, look. This is the cab of this diesel train or locomotive, whatever it is. smell doesn't change, wherever you go, that sort of diesel smell, and, and steam for that matter. So wherever you go, it's always that same smell, it's quite welcoming. And this smell, that smell. Anyway, okay, out here. You're not going to be able to see it through the window, but I can just see two Tartra trams outside. I like how some of the Tartra trams, they still use the trolley poles, which is quite old fashioned. I've never really seen something quite like that before. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back into the main room, Hopefully see the model trains going, and then we'll go and have a look at the exhibits outside. I enjoyed looking around the indoor part of the museum. I'm ready to go out in the cold again now and see what we have to see outside. Because as we saw when we arrived, there was quite a few exhibits outside. So that's where we came in, the road over there. Let's go and have a look at all these exhibits so it looks quite extensive the tracks continue on down there I can see they go beyond some gates they probably go and join up with the Latvian railway network and uh, they don't seem to do any rides at the moment but it'd be quite good if they did but they've got a nice variety of stock steam diesel and electric for us to have a look at so started this big diesel loco here this is look very similar to the cab we saw inside we went inside I'm going to take a guess that that is one of those locos. It's very Russian looking. It's even got the star on the front. And this is its Russian style number here. So I'll be ticking these off later on in my preserved locomotives book. And there we have the steam loco. Great big beast. The 210. I think it's Russian built. It's pretty large. Obviously it's bigger than, you know, probably all the steam engines I've ridden on. Because in Germany I've seen some pretty big ones. Of course, they're standard gauge, this is five foot gauge. It's got some of its connection rods missing, I think. Um, so it's pretty unlikely to steam again, but what a beast it would be if it did. Let's, we can go up to the footplates, let's go up here, have a look. Yeah, it's a shame seeing all these icicles falling off it. You know, a steam loco should be warm and, you know, usually going onto a steam loco's footplate is a warm place, not a place where you see icicles hanging down and snow blowing in the door. But anyway, at least we can have a look. And uh, it is actually slightly warmer in here, only very slightly warmer. It's pretty big. So, yeah, the driver could have sat there. And uh, imagine driving this beast. Looking forward, it would have been great. I get the impression going, oh, it was a mechanically fired loco because there's this door. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. Uh, yeah, look in there. I think it's oil fired as well, you know. Maybe not. No, I can't see any evidence of coal. Um, but yeah, it looks to me, although maybe it's not mechanically fired because there's firebox doors. To be honest, firing a steam loco isn't something I know too much about. I just like to see them and ride behind them. But the actual mechanical side of things, I can't say I know that much about. But if you ever get a chance to ride in a cab footplate of a steam engine, it's an amazing experience. So that's looking back towards the museum. As you can see though, while we're up at this elevated level, we can see what else there is. Typically Russian carriage, another steam loco, and there's a few diesel locos. So let's go down there now and have a look. Still can't get over the sheer enormity of this loco. In fact, I've just noticed up there, that's the missing connecting rod. 
up there. And up there, that looks like a works plate right up there on the on the dome. So let's go and have a look. And this next one looks very similar to me, like a Kriegslock, a uh, German steam loco. But they did have them. There were some built to five foot gauge. So I'm guessing that's what this is. It looks to me just like one. So we'll go and have a look, see what the thing tells us. There's another road there. That seems to have overhead light equipment. We'll have a look at that in a minute. What does it say? Steam locomotive. Ah, yeah, the German class 52. And it says it was built in Kassel in Germany. So yeah, this is basically a Kriegslock built to the Russian gauge. So it wouldn't fit on German's railways. So yeah, big beast. Over there says what appears to be half of an electric multiple unit in EMU. Again, very Russian looking. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. That's interesting. That carriage there, it looks to me, why has it got bars on the windows? It's, uh, we can't go in, but... Oh, it says available for viewing during a guided tour. I suppose you can do them. Whether that's to do with crossing the border so people can't escape. Let's see if I can see what it says on here. I'm just being very careful. I don't want to fall over on those slippery steps. Oh, it's a prisoner. A prisoner transport Asian carry. So that explains the mesh on the window. So prisoners would have ridden in there. Um, not saying anyone should do anything bad or anything, but if you were to go to prison, you get to ride in that. I wonder what it's like inside. Probably not very nice, but you probably did get some decent locos for haulage. Anyway, talking of decent locos, we've got a mix of diesels from some smallish ones to some pretty massive ones, the double diesel. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. Oh, and there's another rail bike. It's chained to the track. If it wasn't, I'd be so tempted to try and go for a ride, but we shouldn't. No, anyway, I can't, so I think I'm off there. Look at that funny little bridge they've built. Train wouldn't get over that or under that. It might smash over it if it, if it was moving. Let's have a little wander down here and we'll come back and look at those diesel workers. So they've got a big crane here. That's interesting to see. I'm not sure it's steam powered or not. Look at that big grabber thing. And then um, I'm not too sure about. It's like we've got tampers and and um, some overhead line equipment. That looks like some little expect inspection saloon. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a tamper. We can uh, sort of see tampers out and about on network, whether it's in the UK or abroad, but you don't often get a chance to go and have a good look at one, so I can show you one here now, show you what they do. So see these funny little arm-like things? They they tamp the ballast. There is, they do have ballast in that, it's just under all this snow. They tamp the ballast and make the track nice and smooth for the trains to run on. That vehicle there, it's an overhead line inspection platform, so you can see the insulators below the platform. So people would stand up there and they'd be able to work on the overhead lines. There isn't actually any overhead lines here. There's a signal. There's that creek sock again. And there's our big Russian built steam loco. So we're going to wander down here now. It's uh, great. And like I say, I've pretty much got the place to myself. There are other visitors around. But when I go, if I go to a museum that doesn't have anything running, I tend to try and pick a weekday when it's open. There's two reasons for that. One is if you go on a weekday when it's not school holidays, you're likely to feel like you've got the place yourself, but like I have, makes making a video a lot easier. Also on the weekends or at the weekends, it's when other places that offer rides tend to be running. So that's why if I was here, so on a weekend day, I would be unlikely to come somewhere like this because I could be at a miniature railway, narrow gauge, standard gauge, whatever, rail tour. Yeah, so that's why I tend to come to these places on a weekday. Little diesel loco here. So we can have a look at, uh, where was it? Yes, that's built in Russia, built in 1981, it says. So it's not that old. I'm intrigued by that though. That is a huge beast. In fact, it's a double loco. I think they do have M62s here in Latvia. There were some on the model railway. I've seen them in Hungary. Where they have what's called a 2M62, which is basically a double one. I've seen them in um, Lithuania. Another little diesel loco. You can just see its works plate up there. And they're getting bigger now, look. This one's effectively got the Latvian flag, the red and white. It's quite a nice looking loco. So that, that's an 040. That's an 060. That's what's called a bow bow, as in four. And then that spec next one might be Coco. And then that is like a Coco times two, as in the wheels. So yeah, this is huge, this loco. 
for a single loco. I think I saw some very similar ones in Vilnius in the in the yard a few years ago when I went to Vilnius. Even this is only a shunting loco. It was built in Russia in 1972, the thing tells me. Can't believe that's a shunting loco. I imagine that was for heavy freight or something. So yeah, it's uh, required for heavy shunting and this must be required for very heavy freight or heavy passenger trains. As we have seen, there's a lot of snow, although it's not really deep, it's not really causing a problem. It does though, they've got snow plows. We saw a narrow gauge one inside. Here we have a much larger standard gauge one. Get across the track. That's why we've anything coming along. Uh, what does it say? Self-propelled. So here, yeah, built in 1946 in Russia, so it seems like it had its own power. Some snow plows, you'd just simply put them in front of a locomotive. You can see that, so that's concrete in there, so keep it down, it needs to be very heavy. Some of them, um, yeah, would have been pushed by a locomotive, but that one obviously propelled itself. That, I think, is probably another prison carriage because it's got, again, meshed windows. So I'm kind of walking, just because I'm here, I might as well walk to the end of the site. Now, I expect beyond there is Latvian Railways. I can see some overhead wires in the distance. I'm not going to worry about waiting around for a train. I'm going to have to go and have a visit to the main railway station to see what there is to see. I don't think Latvia is the best country to travel behind loco hauled trains. I saw a few trains crossing the bridge, they're all units, but quite interesting looking units. This reminds me a bit of the National Rail Museum in York, walking down here, and they do their rides up and down. They used to do much, much longer rides at the NRM, but they don't anymore. It'd be great, wouldn't it, if they could, um, maybe those steam locos are a bit big, but if they had one of those little diesels pushing a carriage up and down here, because it's going to do much else this bit of land, or even if they had a miniature railway. That's um, not criticising the place, it's a great museum, but yeah, if it did some form of ride, especially with all the space they've got, it would be a really fantastic museum. As we walk back though, of course there's the library over there looking down on us. Good view from a library. If I was like a student here and I had to study in the library, I'd be looking out the window all the time, or at least I wouldn't be looking out the window, um, well that's what I was going to say, I wouldn't see any moving trains, so I don't need to look out once, but... You probably can see the main line as well. Whether you'd see an electric loco like that though, I don't know. I think that's probably just a preserve one, but it's obviously preserved it's here in the museum. So, um, yeah, I'm, like I say, I've not seen any locos out on the network since arriving here in Latvia. Just seen trams and trains. Look, there's the snow pile again. It's a pretty big, big thing this is. All right, where should we go now? I think we'll go. Over there, there was one other little vehicle I thought looked worth looking at. And I think we've pretty much seen the whole of this museum. It's been a nice way to start off my visit to Latvia. Never been to this country before. I, I said I went to um, Vilnius a few years ago, Castle Lithuania. In fact, if you want to have a look at the museum there, it does actually remind me a bit of the museum there. They, it was in two parts. I was only able to go in the indoor part. The outdoor part was not open to the public, but you could see it all from the railway station. So have a look at link on screen now. You can see the similarities. You can see what there is to see at the Vilnius Railway Museum. Yes, that's the other half of that EMU. You can see, they've obviously not been able to preserve the whole thing, which is a bit of a shame, but at least they've preserved some of it. Again, very Russian looking. And it probably was built in Russia. So we'll go down to the front of the EMU. And then I think after that, I'll probably do some tram bashing and then Go and have a look around, find a nice restaurant, try some Latvian food. Um, as I say, when I come to these places, I do like to experience, you know, the food, the culture, the transport, everything. As that creeps up again. So I have one more thing to show you. As the EMU, as I said, I do like the front of it. Right, beast. And there's a big mound covered in snow stop it but look at this funny thing here that's not a truck well, it might have been once but it's actually on rails it's narrow gauge look at that it's a narrow gauge truck that's what there were extensive narrow gauge railways in latvia there is still one heritage one i don't think i'm going to get to visit on this visit but maybe for the future if i was to come here in the summer perhaps i understand there were a lot of peat railways in latvia it's a bit like there was in ireland and this would have worked on the peat railways from what i read so yeah that is now, our narrow gauge exhibit outside. That clearly looks like some sort of old good shed there. And again, there's the library. Let's go around to the front now behind, or in front of the two steam locos, and that's where we can finish this video. So if you want to come and 
visit the museum. It is pretty easy to get to. You've only got to walk across the river from the city centre, or you could get on the tram. It's served by a few tram routes. The route's coming on screen now. So it's, it's easy to get to. It's not a hard place to get to. Talking of getting around, this little exhibition here is about a new high-speed line they want to build to connect um, uh, Latvia north with Estonia and south with Lithuania and further south. So it's a bit like high-speed too, but for the Baltic. The Baltics, yeah. So uh, I wonder what people there think of it, because not everyone's so keen on high-speed too in England. Not really that's, that's a separate subject, but I'd just be interested to know what people think if they're generally in favour or not. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, this visit to the Railway Museum in Latvia. I certainly have. It's very cold. My hand is very cold from holding this camera. I think I need to get some gloves on, maybe get a coffee or tea in my hand to warm up. But from the Railway Museum in Latvia, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.